Hi, it's Katrina. From a very expensive warrior sword to an enormous pharaoh's head, here are 10 amazing archaeological discoveries found in the trash. Number 10. Elusa Garbage Dump The city of Elusa, also known as Halusa, thrived 1,500 years ago on the southern edge of the Byzantine Empire in what is now Israel's Negev Desert. National Geographic reports its economy was heavily based on the export of Gaza wine, a white vintage that was shipped across the Mediterranean as far away as France. With 20,000 residents at its peak, the city had churches, public baths, a theater, and craft workshops. Elusa collapsed within two centuries of its heyday. Researchers originally theorized that its fall coincided with the rise of Islam, which saw restrictions on wine production, resulting in the subsequent decline of the city's social and economic systems that relied heavily on the industry. But they were wrong, as they learned by sifting through Elusa's garbage dumps. Historic garbage is full of treasures for us. Plus, no plastic. The dumps revealed that the city fell into decline a century before Islam came to the region. Elusa's collapse happened during the Byzantine Empire's peak. But why? A study published last year, led by zoo archaeologist Guy Bar Oz from the University of Haifa, revealed that trash collection ended in Elusa around the year 550. During that time, Europe and Asia suffered from the effects of a series of volcanic eruptions. Researchers are unsure where the eruptions occurred, but it's pretty clear that volcanic ash blanketed the sky, causing a frigid period in the northern hemisphere known as the Late Antiquity Little Ice Age. It's very close to what is arguably the worst year to be alive, which was 536, the beginning of this period when Europe was covered in fog, the sun shone like the moon, and temperatures in the summer fell to about 2 degrees Celsius. Crops failed for years, and then the plague hit. As a result, societies experienced famines and food shortages along with major social changes. With many civilizations suffering, Elusa could no longer rely on outside markets to stay afloat. Wine demand likely decreased, resulting in the commodity's reduced value and presenting the ancient city with its own set of problems. The takeaway from this study is that there's hidden value in studying a past society's garbage, something University of Oklahoma professor Kyle Harper refers to as an underused archaeological resource. In other words, however unglamorous it is to sort through someone else's trash, it can offer invaluable insight into how ancient people lived. Number 9. Sewer Sword While working deep inside a sewer in Aalborg, Denmark in February 2019, pipe layer Janik Vessergardend and engineer Henning Noor spotted a 3.6-foot-long double-edged sword lodged into place. The shocked pair presented the completely intact artifact to archaeologists from the Historical Museum of Northern Jutland, who determined that the sword likely belonged to an elite 14th century medieval warrior, and that he probably paid quite a hefty price for it. The museum said in a statement, acquiring a sword in the Middle Ages was an extremely costly affair, and only the warrior elite, who then consisted of the nobility, could afford to carry such a weapon. Swords were typically buried with their owners when they died, and how the warrior became separated from his blade is a mystery, as no human remains were found with the weapon. He may have dropped it, as archaeologist Kenneth Nielsen suggested, as the level at which the workers found the sword represents the ground level during the time the warrior lived. Still hard to say why he might have dropped it. The 2.2-pound sword is equipped with something called a bladrill, meaning blood groove, which helped to make the weapon narrow, light, and easy to handle. It may have been crafted as early as the 12th century, meaning it was possibly used for around 200 years before being lost to history. The weapon is rife with battle scars, suggesting that it saw quite a bit of combat and therefore was likely used for quite some time. Around the time of the sword's discovery, archaeologists announced plans to continue sewer excavations in the area in case there are any more artifacts waiting to be discovered. Number 8. Ancient Recycling Earlier this year, researchers at Pompeii revealed the discovery of a recycling program of sorts that the ancient city carried out. Before the city was buried in volcanic ash in 79 AD, residents piled their trash outside its northern wall, creating mounds that were often several meters high. These hills of garbage contained bits of ceramic and plaster, which the Pompeians reused in subsequent construction projects. We found that part of the city was built out of trash, Professor Allison Emerson told The Guardian. The piles outside the walls weren't material that's been dumped to get rid of it. They are outside the walls being collected and sorted to be resold inside the walls. 
Using soil samples, Emerson and her fellow researchers tracked the movement of garbage throughout Pompeii. The difference in soil allows us to see whether the garbage had been generated in the same place where it was found or gathered from elsewhere to be reused and recycled, she said. For example, materials such as broken amphorae and tile pieces were incorporated into some walls. Almost all such walls received a final layer of plaster, hiding the mess of materials within. The takeaway from this research is that the Pompeians lived in much closer proximity to their garbage than we do in modern society, and they cared more about what happened to it, in contrast to today's out-of-sight, out-of-mind approach. As trash becomes increasingly problematic throughout the world, it might be high time for us to take a page out of the ancient Roman handbook and focus more on what happens to our waste. Number 7. Inca Reign of Terror Last year, researchers discovered four skulls belonging to malnourished individuals, three women and a child, in an ancient trash heap at the ruins of Iglesia Colorada, an Incan village located in the Andes foothills. The garbage dump, which largely consisted of food scraps and discarded pottery, contained no evidence for why it contained four skulls, no signs of a formal burial or gifts, such as jewelry, for the afterlife. Eighteen years later, archaeologists remain perplexed. One possible explanation, proposed by researchers Francisco Garrido and Catalina Morales of the National Museum of Natural History in Santiago, Chile, suggests that the Incas made an example out of the four skulls during a so-called reign of terror, using the remains as a warning to local inhabitants. The skulls date back to a time of Inca expansion lasting from the late 15th century to the early 16th century. While many villages likely conceded without opposition, others, like Iglesia Colorada, may have resisted being absorbed into the empire. Consequently, Inca conquerors may have used violence to intimidate their adversaries into submission. It was out of the ordinary to bury human remains with garbage at Iglesia Colorada, which had a designated human burial site. Unlike the properly buried bodies, the four skulls in the trash heap had holes drilled in them, indicating that they were strung up and put on display at some point in time, presumably to remind locals to be on their best submissive behavior. Number 6. Booted Man While building London's super sewer in 2018 in a likely futile attempt to combat the city's human waste problem, which is characterized by too much human waste and nowhere to put it, archaeologists discovered the 500-year-old skeleton of a man wearing thigh-high leather boots. The remains were found along the Thames River near the Tower of London. In a statement released by the Museum of London Archaeology, find specialist Beth Richardson explained that the man's boots are telling of what his daily life was like. Richardson said they have helped us to better understand how he may have made his living in hazardous and difficult conditions, but also how he may have died. It has been a privilege to be able to study something so rare and so personal. Fitted with extra soles and stuffed with a moss-like material, the boots may have been reinforced for a better fit or for extra protection in the cold. The man who wore them likely passed away during the late 15th or early 16th century, according to Life Science. Additionally, all signs point toward the man dying unexpectedly, because leather was an expensive material at the time, and it was therefore unlikely that someone would be deliberately buried with leather boots on. Because the skeleton bears no obvious signs of fatal injuries, the man's cause of death remains undetermined. Researchers speculate that he may have fallen into the mud and ultimately drowned in the river. Based on his apparel, as well as the worn condition of his teeth and bones, he may have spent his life on the water, perhaps as a sailor, wading through water and passing ropes through his teeth. The man suffered from osteoarthritis by the time he died at 35, indicating that whatever he did for a living, his work was tough, repetitive, and taxing on the body. Number 5. Colossal Pharaoh Statue In 2017, a poor area of Cairo was undergoing some sewer construction when someone spotted something large sticking out of the water. Archaeologists were called in to investigate, and it turns out it was a colossal statue. Measuring around 26 feet tall, the torso and head were pulled from mud and groundwater by a bulldozer. Found near the ruins of the ancient city of Heliopolis, it is believed to be Ramses II, who ruled Egypt around 3,300 years ago. The upper part of another statue was also found in the same sewer. It is being hailed as one of the most important discoveries ever by the Egyptian Antiquities Authority. The area is most likely chock full of buried relics, but the area is considered one of the poorest in Cairo. Many media reports called it a slum, and the whole area where people live needs to be cleaned out. There are several pictures of people taking pictures with the statue surrounded by rubbish. The sewers and market now need to be moved so that archaeologists can continue to search. Number 4. 
Why did Greenland's Vikings disappear? Archaeologists have long been puzzled about the mysterious disappearance of Viking settlements in Greenland during the 15th century. Was it pirates, or the Black Plague, or maybe the Vikings' inability to adapt to the frigid, changing climate they chose to settle in? The going theory among scholars is that Norse settlements in Greenland, which appeared around the year 1000 amid a warmer climate that eventually transitioned into the Little Ice Age, squandered natural resources resulting in a self-inflicted demise. Recent research analyzing Viking middens, or heaps of garbage, is helping researchers to unscramble the reasons behind the failure of Norse settlements in Greenland. In their early days, these communities relied on an agriculture-based diet while prioritizing trade over farming. Trade was not always reliable, however, yet these villages depended on it to replenish their supplies. Harsh winters ushered in by the changing climate further complicated these issues, on top of the Vikings' reluctance to learn hunting techniques from the region's Inuit communities. As the climate cooled starting around 1250, farming became increasingly difficult. Farms were abandoned, and the wealthy resorted to eating livestock while the poor took to the sea. The region's population dwindled slowly from there, with many people migrating back to Iceland and Europe to avoid starvation and death. Researchers are currently trying to gain permission to excavate other archaeological sites in Greenland for the sake of learning more about how the Vikings lived and fell in the region. Number 3. Chinese Oracle Bones Over 3,000 years ago, Chinese fortune tellers used the shoulder blades of oxen and the undersides of turtle shells, known as oracle bones, to try predicting the future. They did so by carving symbols into the bone or shell. Then, they applied a hot poker to the material, causing it to crack. The cracking patterns were interpreted to answer people's questions about the future, establishing a practice known as scapulimency, or fortune-telling through oracle bones. Most oracle bones, also called dragon bones, date back to the Shang dynasty between 1600 and 1046 BC, although some come from the Zhou dynasty between 1046 and 226 BC. These artifacts were rediscovered in 1899, when Wang Yirong, chancellor of the Imperial Academy, fell ill with malaria. The doctor recommended dragon's bones, and to Wang Yirong's surprise, the bones had ancient Chinese writing on them. The discovery sparked interest among scholars who wanted to know where the bones were found. Wang Yirong passed away in 1900, and it wasn't until 1908 that the source of the oracle bones was finally discovered. That year, scholar Lu Zhenyu found that the bones came from outside the city of Anyang, where 50,000 of them were discarded and buried. The oracle bones serve as the earliest evidence of a developed system of Chinese writing, making them a priceless resource when it comes to learning about their customs, culture, and everyday lives. Number 2. Roman Trash Mound Monte Testaccio, one of ancient Rome's most famous hills, constitutes the civilization's largest artificial mound and ancient world's biggest garbage dump. Measuring nearly a mile in circumference and around 150 feet tall, this site looks like nothing more than a big hill at first glance. Scholars are currently examining Monte Testaccio's contents to gain a better understanding of the ancient Roman economy in the absence of written records. They've learned that olive oil was a major commodity for around 250 years, starting in the first century, based on the abundant remains of amphorae that were dumped at Monte Testaccio. Olive oil was imported from places such as Spain, Libya, and Tunisia, and the containers it came in were piled at Monte Testaccio, where they were sprinkled with lime to subdue their offensive odor. There are at least 25 million amphorae at the site, according to co-director of excavations José Remesal of the University of Barcelona, who spoke with Archaeology.com writer Jared A. Lobel. More generous estimates put the number of amphorae at around 80 million, and while the site was certainly designated for refuse, the pots were carefully and intentionally arranged into a hill. Monte Testaccio was largely abandoned after Rome fell in the year 500, and people eventually forgot what it was once used for. Today, its main function is to serve as a platform for learning about ancient Roman commerce in the region. Number 1. Paper Pile In what Atlas Obscura refers to as ancient Egypt's most literate trash heap, a massive garbage pile at a site called Oxyrhynchus near El Banasa is arguably one of the most informative archaeological discoveries ever made. The artifacts here are extremely well-preserved, owing to the arid climate and lack of proximity to any floodplains. 
Once Egypt's second or third largest city, numerous civilizations have made their mark at Oxyrhynchus, where some of the earliest Christian monasteries and oldest Egyptian mosques were located, including the Nubian, Persian, Greek, Ptolemaic, Roman, Byzantine, and Fatimid empires. The site also functioned as a dumping station for hundreds of thousands of papyrus artifacts, including official records, classical texts, grocery lists, personal correspondence, and more. Perhaps the most famous pieces of ancient literature that were found are a comedy by Sophocles and Sappho's poetry, as well as the biggest collection of Christian manuscripts ever discovered, including lost biblical texts. But the more ordinary artifacts are extraordinarily valuable in their own right, offering an unprecedented glimpse into the daily lives of the societies that lived at Oxyrhynchus throughout history. The city was abandoned around 64 AD when the Arabs conquered Egypt because the new government was either incapable or unwilling to maintain the canal system that was necessary for bringing water to Oxyrhynchus. For over a century, scholars have worked to decipher the scripts collected at the site, and it's estimated that they've only transcribed around 2% of the documents so far. Thanks for watching! As you know, one's trash is another's treasure trove of information. Would you like to learn about more artifacts that were discovered in the trash? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you are new here. See you soon! Bye!